Good afternoon, everyone. This is Thaisa Kelly from Monarch Housing. And this is the 2015 NJ Counts webinar that we're going to be going over with you guys, uh, the PIT coordinators and the process that we're going through for the app for the count this year. We're first going to be uh, talking a little bit about um, what we're doing for the 2015 count this year, or 2015 in January, it will be a HUD mandated count year. Um, with the hearth changes, HUD does mandate that communities count the sheltered count every year. However, the unsheltered count must be done every other year. Um, and 2015 is a mandated unsheltered count year. So this year's count will be very important. We want to make sure that communities are getting uh, the best count possible and that we are um, analyzing the data and providing you with the best numbers possible for the count as we move forward in the HUD process. Um, sorry, just one piece of housekeeping before I continue with the rest of this. Um, we will be taking questions. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to type your questions in the chat box that you have. For the webinar, we will be answering all questions at the end of the presentation. Um, so please don't worry if you um, send a question and we don't respond to you right away. We will be responding to all questions at the end of the presentation. So back to the presentation, we are going to, um, as mentioned before, this is a HUD mandated count year. Um, and for you guys that are the PIT coordinators, each COC is responsible for coordinating the count within your community. Um, that includes the count of the sheltered population as well as the unsheltered count population. Um, so we're going to be looking to the PIT coordinators to really um, plan out how you guys are going to be collecting the data for your count identify the locations for your unsheltered count, figure out who's going to be participating and um, interacting with us the, as PIT coordinators to discuss uh, the process and um, address any issues that might come up. For the count this year, or sorry, for next year for 2015 count, um, we are going to do the same process as we did last year. So where there will be paper surveys that are done for the unsheltered count and we will be pulling information for the sheltered count from the HIMIS system for any shelters or transitional housing programs that are enter entering information into the HIMIS system. We will, be, we will be pulling that information directly from HIMIS. There have been a few updates to the actual survey so that the paper survey ma matches the HIMIS information um, in, re in regards to the updates and the, um, the HIMIS standards. Um, but they are minor changes, so it will essentially look the same as it did last year. Um, we will be doing the same process as we did for the 2014 count. As the PIT coordinators for your community, we are going to be interacting with you. The Monarch staff will be interacting with you solely um, in this process for the count. Um, we, will, we would prefer um, that you guys handle any questions or issues locally with regards to how you're conducting your count. Um, if there are any major issues that come up that are um, related to the survey in general, we can address those issues, but we would like for the PIT coordinators to field all those questions and um, relay all that information to us, and we can get back to you with any questions. Especially if there are any um, large issues, we can then ensure that we share them with all the PIT coordinators so that each community gets the information that's necessary to make this count successful. But in your role as PIT coordinators, um, you will be the primary point of contact between us and the local count process in your community. Okay. Uh, so the next thing that we want to talk about is just developing the point in time count in your community. Um, as mentioned before, the sheltered count will primarily be taken from the HIMIS system. So any emergency shelters or transitional housing programs that are entering information into HIMIS, we will pull that information directly from HIMIS. However, we do know that there are some programs in communities that do not enter information into HIMIS. There are some sheltering programs that either provide emergency shelter, transitional housing, or hotel and motel placements to individuals and families that are not entering information. So as a PIT coordinator, you would really need to um, think about what are those agencies and programs in your community that are not currently entering into HIMIS and identify ways that you can um, include their information into the survey and um, ensure that you collect information for the people that are served on the night of the count. Um, in addition to the sheltered count, you will need to organize the street count. Um, as mentioned before, as you can see, the count is taking place on January 28, 2015, and we will be asking about people who are unsheltered the night of January 27th. 
the first question on the survey is, where did you sleep on the night of January 27th? So the street count will need to incorporate all of those individuals that were unsheltered on the night of January 27th. New this year, HUD has released some guidance related to count methodologies um, that includes a discussion of a seven-day window for the count. The seven-day window basically states that communities are al allowed to collect surveys for people who are unsheltered and do their count over a seven-day period. However, the survey must collect information about where people slept on the night of the count. So essentially that means that your community has the ability to conduct the count from January 28th to, I guess that's about February 2nd, the following Wednesday um, in February, and you can um, continue to do the surveys um, up until February 4th. However, the question on the survey, the first question remains the same. You will be asking people where did they sleep on the night of January 27th. If they indicate that they were unsheltered on that night, um, then that survey can be submitted for uh, the point in time purposes. Um, so you have a seven day window to, to conduct the count and each community has the opportunity to determine whether or not you will take advantage of that seven day window. It is really up to you. Um, one thing that I will point out is that in the HUD guidance on the count methodology, they do indicate that ideally that seven day window should take place for um, unsheltered people who are on the streets um, and that can take place through outreach organizations that are doing outreach work in the streets, as well as through service-based counts. For example, if there are any food pantries that are open on days other than the day of the count, um, they can complete surveys um, and ask people where they were on the night of the 27th. So that is a local decision that you will have to make. We do ask that if you are going to um, take advantage of the seven-day window, or if you're not, we're asking all communities to just notify us um, what decision you have made in terms of how long you will be conducting the count, over what period that count will be conducted. Um, we just need to know for our purposes of analyzing the data and understanding how long we um, need to wait to collect information, whether or not you'll be taking advantage of that seven-day window. So we do ask that you please notify us about what your community will be doing with regards to that seven-day window. For many of you who have participate, participated in this um, count, in the 2014 process, you may be aware that we gave op communities the opportunity to determine locally whether or not they would count um, temporary rental assistance provided through the boards of social services as part of their homeless count. Some communities across the state did um, choose to count the TRAs as homeless and other communities chose not to. Um, through that process, HUD did come back to us and indicate that for their purposes, TRAs do not count as homeless. However, we know that the reality in New Jersey is that for many communities that did choose to count TRAs, those individuals that are using those vouchers truly are homeless. So once again this year, we are giving you the opportunity to determine locally whether or not to count TRAs as homeless. Um, please keep in mind that even though we are giving you this opportunity, um, in regards to the information that we provide to you for reporting to HUD, the HUD numbers will not include the TRAs. Um, HUD has indicated that they do not see that as homeless, so the HUD numbers that we provide to you for the reporting through the HUD data exchange will not include the TRA information. However, for the um, local reports that we put together at the end of this process, if your community chooses, we can include TRAs in that final report um, to indicate the full scope of the need in your homeless population for your community. We have yet to determine how that will be incorporated into the final report that's put together, but you are more than welcome to collect information and, and um, submit those surveys, and we will give you those numbers and provide that analysis for you locally for your planning purpose. Um, so for um, the count process, we're asking each community to really coordinate all the agencies that are going to be participating in the 2015 count. What that will require is that you will need to develop a full list of all the agencies that are participating in your count. Um, for the count purposes, we are looking to really identify those people who were homeless on the night of January 27th. Um, HUD defines homelessness as people who are 
living in a congregate living situation, emergency shelter, transitional housing, or hotel motel placement paid for by an agency, or for individuals and families who are unsheltered living in a place not meant for human habitation. Um, when you're developing your list of participating agencies, please keep in mind that there are some agencies um, that questions come up about whether or not they should be participating in the count. Any program that is dedicated to the homeless should participate in the count. If they're providing emergency shelter or transitional housing or any type of emergency placement and they're specifically for homeless individuals or families, they should participate in the count. This also includes youth shelters as long as those beds in the youth shelter are not dedicated to, to children who are under the care of the state, who are not under um, DCPMP care. Um, if those beds are specifically for homeless and runaway youth, they should be counted for the survey process. All victims of domestic violence, shelters, and transitional housing programs should participate in the count. And I believe most of, and all of them have participated in the past, and this should continue. Um, Again, hotel and motel placements, please keep in mind that there are a number of agencies and programs in the community that might provide emergency shelter to individuals in need, individuals and families, um, and they may or may not be part of the traditional sheltering system that you have. So we ask communities to take a look at any of the faith-based community programs that might be operating in your community, any of the programs that are operating by agencies that are not traditionally part of your COC process, um, if they are providing shelter to people who are homeless because they have nowhere else to live, nowhere else to go, they should be participating in the count and should be submitting surveys for all the people that they are serving on the night of January 27th. We can provide more information about who else to um, include in your count if you have any questions about that. You should have all received an email regarding the agency code list, um, and that was the list that was used for the 2014 count. We're asking all, agents, all communities to verify the agencies that are on this list, to update the list, add in agencies, change anything that you want to change, and give us the completed code list um, by December 5th. Um, we need this list in order to ensure that we have the right coding for the agencies when we collect the surveys and do the analysis. We will also this year, um, new this year, we will also be putting together a list for you of the HIMIS participating programs and asking that you verify all of those programs that are in HIMIS. Um, that list will be sent out to you by December 8th. And we ask that you take a look at that HIMIS list and confirm all of those programs by December 19th. We will be um, pulling information for all agencies and programs that are in HIMIS that are emergency shelter or transitional housing programs. Please note this year, um, any programs that are labeled as SSO, services only programs in HIMIS, if they are providing shelter to people, um, we, would, we will only pull their information if they are set up as a separate program and only include information about people who have been placed in hotel motel placements or who are in um, temporary rental assistance vouchers provided through an agency. We will not pull information from SSO programs if that information is mixed in with other types of services that that agency might provide. I'm now going to turn it over to Caitlin to discuss the PIT survey. Okay, hello everyone. Um, I'm just going to briefly go over the PIT survey, some information on that, and then go into the training piece a little bit. Um, so Thais already mentioned, similar to Last year, we're going to pull the data right from the HMIS system for any emergency shelter or transitional housing programs that do enter data into the system. Um, one thing to keep in mind, too, and you know, we can hope that they would be willing to participate, um, since this does kind of ease the burden of some of the emergency shelter and transitional housing programs, you should still be expecting their participation in the point in time. You know, that could be something as simple as collecting some of the surveys and actually entering them into SurveyMonkey for the unsheltered count or participating in, you know, maybe a Project Homeless Connect site or unsheltered count. You know, we wanted to kind of lessen some of the double entry work since they're already entering the information into HMIS, but I think it's still reasonable to expect their participation during the point in time um, count itself. Um, as Thaisa just mentioned, any hotel motel placements or TRA placements that are not in a separate HMIS program 
that means it's separated out from any prevention dollars that are used or any dollars that are given to people who aren't literally homeless or back rent, anything like that, we won't be able to use that information from HMIS. They will have to fill out paper surveys if we're going to capture that information. Um, in the past, you know, we've run service reports to try to figure out exactly how many people were being served, but it's, it's a really tedious process and it's very difficult um, on our end to actually make sure that the numbers are accurate you know, when it's not just a clear program that are specifically for hotel, motel, or TRA placements. Um, this doesn't mean necessarily, you know, that they have to go back and anybody who is listed in that program that's not currently still in it, they don't have to move them into the new program, but it would be about moving forward, making sure that anybody that's receiving a hotel, motel, and TRA, especially on the night of the point in time, is listed in that separate um, hotel, motel, or TRA program. Um, paper surveys that come in without age or gender will be thrown out. Um, you know, we went through a lot of discussion last year on how we were going to do the deduplication. We also will be having a webinar probably, you know, later in January with all of you to kind of go over the process of how we're going to deduplicate all of the information. Um, but this is definitely something that's important to stress when you're doing the trainings and which we will make sure to mention when we're doing our trainings in each of your communities. Um, obviously, you don't see initials on there. They're extremely important to include initials as well, but we found that age and gender are really our two things, that if we don't have them, or obviously the answer to question one to determine whether they're homeless or not, the, the survey will have to be thrown out. Um, this is similar to what we did last year. So in the event of a duplicate HMIS and paper survey, we're always going to default to HMIS. Um, we're going to be a little bit more strict this year as far as the deduplication and catching those because we found a lot of duplicates last year that were hard to confirm because agencies, you know, were submitting paper surveys even though they were entering information into HMIS. Um, so it's, it's making it very clear, you know, that the agencies, if you're putting information in HMIS, you don't need to fill out paper surveys at all. And also, though, you know, at Project Homeless Connect or when people are going out and trying to do the paper surveys for people at food pantries and things like that, that if they stayed in a sheltered program, whether it's an HMIS program or not, that they're listing the program name that they stayed in the night before. Um, this is really going to help us out with the deduplication. Again, like I said, we're going to do a, a webinar later on um, in January to really go into more detail about the deduplication, but those are two key points that are really going to need to be stressed during the trainings for the point in time. Um, so just the 2015 count process, which we've already said. So the unsheltered count, obviously you have to collect them in the paper survey. For sheltered, if they're a sheltering program that's in HMIS, we'll pull it right from the system. Um, if it's not in HMIS, they obviously have to fill out paper surveys. All sheltered programs will need to submit a sheltered summary form. We did do this last year. We had, uh, I'd say, some minor success with it. There were some communities that were able to um, you know, get us all of the sheltered summary forms, which was really useful because then we were able to compare them to the HMIS data, and they were able to go back and kind of verify that the numbers were accurate, and we were able to really capture everyone that was in the programs. Um, so we're going to try to push for that again, and we're, you know, asking that all of you really take the time to kind of follow up with the agencies when trying to collect them to send to us. Um, obviously, the at-risk population will have to be done through the paper survey as well. So this is just what the sheltered summary form looks like. It's a really short form. Um, it's one form per agency. They just need to list, you know, the county that their program is in, the agency program name, as well as the HMIS program name, just so we can compare and make sure we're looking at the right program. Whether it's an individual or family program, their total number of beds, and the total number of people served on the night of the count, which would be January 27th. Um, these will be due to us by January 29th by 5 p.m. And we're asking that you have all of the agencies send the summary forms to you guys as the PIC coordinators and then you forward them over to us. Um, so just to go over some of the trainings, I know we have scheduled our trainings in most of the communities. So if your community has not scheduled the training yet for us to come in, um, please send us an email as soon as you can with the date that you want us to come in and do the training. Um, we will be doing trainings through webinars. I know I'm skipping a little bit, but we will be hosting two trainings, two 
training webinars on January 8th and January 26th. Um, we haven't decided the times yet for either of those, but we will be sending you out the links and the times for all of that. We wanted to do kind of one in the beginning and one at the end to kind of catch anybody who signs on late. Um, we'll also, I'm sure, be recording that and then posting it to our website in case anybody needs to refer to that last minute or anything. Um, we have put together the same training materials that we put together last year for the survey. So there's the user guide, um, the quick reference guide, abbreviation list, and online data entry guide. So, you know, depending on what step people are volunteering for, they can refer to the different training materials. Um, I will be sending out an email this afternoon with the most updated version of the survey, the final version of the survey, um, and all of these training materials. We'll also be posting them to our website. So you should be able to, to access them in a number of ways. Um, HUD also has released some PIT and HIC guidance materials. Um, we recommend that all of the PIT coordinators, as well as really any agency that's participating in the PIT, um, kind of go through and take a look at HUD's, HUD's um, PIT materials. You can find them on the HUD Exchange. Um, if you, you know, are signed up for that email list, I'm sure you've already received them in an email. Um, we can send out the link in that email that I'm going to send later on with a direct link to get to that guidance. There's actually also going to be a webinar on Friday, December 5th from 10 to 11 that um, APT Associates is putting on to go over the PIT guidance that HUD has released. Um, I can include actually the link to register for that webinar this afternoon when I send out that email. So that's something else that can help you go through that. Um, like I said, we'll have two webinar trainings, and also the practice survey for SurveyMonkey will be available from December 8th to January 16th. So once that is set up, we will be sending out the link to that. Uh, now I'm just going to pass it over to Jay to go over the last of the presentation. Good afternoon, all. Um, in terms of overseeing the uh, overall collection of data. This is just a little summary of uh, what um, Caitlin and Thaisa have been speaking to you about in terms of the time frames. Um, so in terms of the uh, paper survey, uh, again, uh, to uh, reiterate, uh, you're going to need in your community to go over what your data collection time frame will be uh, given that HUD uh, guidance regarding a seven-day window. Um, some of you may decide to still do it just within a 24-hour period of the count um, to do all of those surveys in that time frame and then start entering them. Uh, but whatever you decide, uh, all of that data must be submitted via SurveyMonkey um, by Wednesday, February 11th. And that data submission deadline uh, is firm. Uh, and that will be by 5 p.m. We will close down that link. Um, and there's not going to be any exceptions this year. That is two weeks um, after the count. And there's also, if you read the line below it, um, the live link that we will be sending you will also be available to send out a week in advance of the count, uh, starting January 21st for boards of social services and non-HEMIS uh, transitional housing programs. The types of programs that may have long-term stable uh, populations that they're serving of homeless folks who they can fill out uh, information for in advance because they know that they will be in uh, those same housing situations on the night of the count. So again, that um, live link will be open from January 21 before the count for those uh, agencies and will be open two weeks following the date of the count until the 11th. For HEMIS, uh, we are going to ask that as quickly as possible following the date of the count, the information in HEMIS be brought up to date for all of those who are participating in HEMIS. We are going to do an initial data poll a week after the count on February 4th. Um, and with those summary surveys in hand, we will be able to pr put a bit of a comparison together of what agencies have communicated to us via the summary survey form and see if that matches what their HEMIS says. Uh, and if, if there are discrepancies, we'll be contacting you as our, as our coordinators uh, to get in touch with them and see if there are issues that need to be addressed there. Um, but if there's not, then we're just going to verify that those numbers are accurate and our final data poll from HEMIS will be um, following the date of the following uh, Wednesday, 
following February 4th, the 11th of February, so the same day as the SurveyMonkey deadline, uh, we'll be doing our final data poll after, um, after the end of day that day. Um, and then for the summary surveys, uh, those forms that Caitlin showed us before, uh, we are going to ask that those be completed by the end of the day following the count. So that's Thursday, January 29th by 5 p.m. Those will need to be submitted so we can use those, um, like, like I said, to check the HIMIS data, and that will be an important thing to have in hand. Moving on. We just wanted to emphasize that the role of PIT coordinator, um, as in past years, is that of a facilitator, a liaison with, with your community. Uh, basically, all communication that we do to your community is, is going to be coming through you. Um, so we're not going to be sending direct emails or messages to other agencies other than the PIT coordinators. Um, so we ask you to do the same. Um, disseminate the PIT information to your community, um, and any information that you get from the community, uh, send over to us. Please don't um, decide to delegate um, the agency to send things directly to us, unless it's something that is, um, you know, really urgent about the overall working of the count materials. Um, because you know we have 21 counties to work with, and 21 counties times a couple dozen agencies means that there's just too many moving pieces for us. And so your role is really important to help us address those questions um, and provide the surveys to folks um, and the materials that they need. Uh, one thing that we do want to emphasize again, like in past years, um, uh, is the part of the survey at the very top that has identifying information about where that survey was completed, um, fields such as the county, the agency, uh, the agency code that are at the very top of the surveys, we highly recommend and we um, ask you to fill those out before handing them out to the different agencies or sending them via email. Uh, in that way, you can be assured that the surveys completed at each of the different count sites and locations and agencies is going to be accurate instead of just trusting that someone will be able to cross-reference their own agency code with the list that you've sent out. So uh, if you can do that, that would be a really big help to help us get accurate information and be able to track down surveys if we need to. Um, we also ask that you do those sheltered summary forms. Um, it, we need those by the 29th um, because last year, as Caitlin said, the participation in those forms was a little bit spotty, but it is a very, very useful tool for us, um, and we'd like to see that become a regular staple of this process um, moving forward, especially this year. So following up, uh, after the PIT will be the deduplication process, and um, instead of going into detail about it now, as Caitlin said, sometime after or late in the process of the count uh, at the end of January, we'll be working with you on the next steps uh, via another webinar. Um, but what we are planning to do this year uh, it, it, as we did last year with the training, is we're going to provide you in the community as the PIC coordinators with the duplicates list. So all of those records that show up as a duplicate with another record in the data and a description of the common duplication issues that we found. So whether it be that there are uh, issues between HEMIS and HEMIS or issues between survey and survey, uh, we'll definitely make sure that we uh, share those issues with you so that when you and your community are looking at the, the duplicates, you can make decisions based on um, you know, what you should be uh, looking for that might be troubling uh, rather than just kind of flying blind. We'll try to provide really good guidance for you. Um, it's, it can be a tricky process and it's um, not easy, but it is important in order to get the most accurate information. So we're going to try to do, um, do our best to work with you through that process as well again this year. <laughs> 